everyone, welcome to our session. I'm Rachel Tan from Lovletics, and today we will be going through how to effectively visualize your data science projects. A little bit about our company. We are a certified Databricks and Tableau services partner headquartered in Arlington, Virginia, with specializations in data visualization and data science, to name a few. So what's so important about data visualization? Data visualization can help us explain the meaning of our data science models to business users in a clear and effective way, allowing them to have actionable insights quickly and improve results. In this session, we will be sharing tips and tricks on visualization best practices and how you can enable your users by making data science more accessible. For our use case today, Let's look at a retail company whose sales and marketing team have questions about upcoming sales. More specifically, will existing customers repurchase the product in the coming month? Why and why not? Or what is the expected revenue? And how can we improve email targeting? To answer these questions, our data science team built a predictive model and deployed it on Databricks. So here is the code in Databricks that builds a machine learning model with MLflow. And over here, we have moved a version of that model into production. We then visualize the model's predictions using a Tableau dashboard to communicate our findings to the sales and marketing team. To do so, we set up a Databricks SQL Analytics endpoint that integrates easily with BI tools like Tableau. So we can go to SQL Analytics, find our endpoint, and we can get the relevant credentials for Tableau. We then plug the connection details into our Tableau connector. So Tableau has a native connector, and we can just go to new data source and connect to Databricks. We fill in those credentials, and then we can use that to visualize our data directly from SQL Analytics. And here we built a dashboard. And throughout the presentation, we will be referring to this dashboard to provide examples of how you can create effective visualizations. So what are some visualization best practices to make sure that the results of the predictive model are easily communicated to the sales and marketing team? as well as management level stakeholders. The first best practice would be to keep it simple. We want to present high level overviews to the audience before drilling into the details by keeping the most important metrics at the top. Use the F or the Z pattern in the dashboard to allow the audience's gaze to easily follow the information. The F pattern places the most important information on the top left, then guides the users to read across the visualization before moving down to the next portion of the visualization. Meanwhile, the Z pattern guides the user to interact with your dashboard in a Z-shaped manner. So with this knowledge in mind, and we'll return to our dashboard, we place the numbers the sales and marketing team were most concerned with at the top. How customers are going to repurchase and what is their expected revenue. We then place the next most important information after that. Reasons for repurchasing. Finally, the rest of the dashboard displays individual level data that can help the team identify who they want to target in their offers or promotions. We also recommend that you reduce any unnecessary noise that might clutter your dashboard. Use visualizations and graphs that are easy to understand at a glance and avoid text heavy visualizations like tables because it is more difficult for audiences to comb through the information to derive insights. 
Shapes and colours are a great tool to highlight important information. However, you also want to make sure that you don't overwhelm the audience with too many shapes or a dashboard that is too colourful. Another tip is to use white space, as that can really make your visuals stand out from one another. It also gives your dashboard a more professional look. Remember to prioritise quality over quantity. You want your users to be able to get the most important information within the few se first few seconds of looking at your dashboard. They can then spend more time digging deeper into the details. If you have too many items on a dashboard, this can prevent your audience from being able to hone in quickly on key data. So on our dashboard, we decided to display the top three features determined by the model that affects our predictions the most, instead of providing an entire list. Next, remember to keep it consistent. Make sure to use standardized, make sure to standardize font sizes across headers and labels, and try to keep the number of font types to use to a minimum. On our dashboard, we made sure our headers are all in the same format and any explainer text also displays the same way. When it comes to colors, keep them to a maximum of four. There are some great tools out there that provide beautiful color palettes, so definitely utilize them. On our dashboard, we utilize blues and greens to highlight the information. And finally, standardize your text elements on your visualizations. For example, if you use titles, make sure all your charts have them. These small changes can really elevate the overall look and user experience of your dashboards. The next thing we want to mention is understanding your target audience. This is especially key for data science related visualizations. Since you may deal with a mixture of technical and non-technical audience members, who focus on very different insights from predictive analysis. Technical audiences would include data engineers or data scientists, those who are more involved with the back end of model development and who are familiar with technical lingo related to predictive analytics. Non-technical audiences include business analysts and other users and stakeholders. These are the front end users of the model results who often focus on understanding business insights and will probably be unfamiliar with technical terms. A technical audience would want to understand the specific process used to derive business insights, such as what tools or technical configurations were involved in building the model. A non-technical user would instead want to know high-level business insights, such as what the model can say about their business. A technical audience would require granular understanding of the me result metrics, such as how the model is evaluated. However, a technical or non-technical audience just wants to know the overall results of this analysis, so does the model perform well or not? And finally, a technical audience would be interested in the actionable steps for model improvement, such as how to further fine-tune or maintain the model in the long run. The non-technical audience would be focused on the actionable steps, next steps for the business strategy, such as what are the direct applications to the decisions and KPIs. Here are some questions that my technical audience would ask, such as what is the MSE or mean square error of my model and is it time to retrain my model? And the non-technical audience would have questions related to the business. So when you design your visualizations, keep in mind who the end users are and how to suitably answer their questions about your analysis. But what happens when our dashboard is related to a technical process, as predictive modeling often is? This is where explaining those technical terms becomes very important. So if we do need to include technical jargon or metrics in our visualization, make sure to explain them in a way that a non-technical audience would also understand. Our goal is to have users of the dashboard understand what's going on, regardless of their technical background. 
So the first step to explaining technical terms is to define them. We then want to explain the definition in simple and accessible terms with as little jargon as possible and provide context to the definition. If the definition cannot be explained in a couple of sentences, we can always provide additional reading materials through embedded links to the articles. We've put together some examples of how you can explain technical terms. For example, a technical explanation of an R squared value would be that the R squared represents the proportion of variability of the dependent variable around its mean that is explained by the independent variables. However, for users that are not familiar with this technical definition, you can explain it in simpler terms. R squared tells us how well our model explains what we want to predict. It is a value between 0 and 1, where a higher value indicates better explanatory power. What I've done is give a simple explanation of the R squared, and then I've highlighted what a non-technical audience would really want to know. What value is good and what is bad? Similarly, for a mean squared error or MSE, instead of a technical definition, we can say that MSE is a measure of the difference between what the model predicts and the actual values. That means that the lower the MSE, the better the model performance. Some technical terms are harder to explain than others, especially terms that are formulas made up of other technical terms. Take for example F-score, which is a common classification metric composed of two other technical metrics, precision and recall. So instead of giving a full technical definition to your non-technical audience, you can give an example that best highlights this term in practice. So F-score is a single metric that tells us whether our model is actually making useful classifications. The higher the F-score, the better. For example, if there are 99 negative and 1 positive infection tests, a model that predicts all 100 tests to be negative is 99% accurate, but not very useful, and so would have a low F-score. However, if F-score is a metric that is not the main focus of your visualization, and if you don't want an example adding to the length of the explanation, you can embed a link for the more curious users to find out more. Here are some design tips for when you do include technical terms in your visualization. Firstly, utilize information icons or about buttons so that they can hide the text of your explanation unless users hover or click on them. Make sure you realize space constraints and the limited attention span of your users. Keep your explanations brief. Finally, highlight the key terms you are using so that users are immediately drawn to them. These tips will give your dashboard a clean but effective look. Our dashboard does not display any sort of reporting metrics on model performance. However, to con provide context for the predictions, we explicitly stated the question we were trying to answer, so right at the top here. Will our customers from a certain time period make another purchase in the coming month? We also allowed our users to set a threshold, classifying predictions into repurchase and not repurchase. As our less technical audience might not understand what this threshold means, we've added an information icon to help explain what this means. On our dashboard, we also displayed the top three features by their feature column name in the underlying data which can potentially return a column name that is not easily understandable. In this case, we have Single Guardian PCT as our second most important feature. To help our user understand what this feature means, we included a description in the tooltip. So when someone, someone hovers over it, it tells us that Single Guardian PCT is the percentage of families with a Single Guardian 
in that customer's zip code area. And last but not least, let's dive into the topic of model performance and interpretability. So in terms of understanding um, models in the machine learning world, we can often group them into two categories. We have simple models or white box models that are easier to interpret and understand because features and relationships utilized in the models are observable. On the other hand, more complex models or black box models can be more performant than white box models, but are harder to explain as their inner workings tend to be less transparent. So this leads us to our dilemma. We tend to run models with the highest accuracy possible, but that could also mean that we lose our understanding of the models. We need to be able to interpret our model so that we can check for noisy data, bias decision-making, and reliability. Interpretability is especially important when our audience is using the model results to gain actionable insights. So how do we decide when to prioritize accuracy or interpretability? The first thing we can do is check for difference in accuracy between the models. How much accuracy are we sacrificing by using a white box model instead? Is this percentage difference within the margin of error caused by random sampling of the data? And how much does it cost the business if the white box model is used instead of the black box model? Take into consideration that black box models can also be more computationally expensive over time. In many cases, a properly tuned white box model can actually achieve similar results to a black box model. However, having said all that, we do want to mention that if you do end up having to use a black box model, there are still some additional packages that can help explain them better. One workaround we like to use are SHAP values. SHAP is a model agnostic method, which means you can apply them to any model and helps explain the model, marginal contribution of features to a prediction outcome. So this helps the users understand the model better. It essentially provides a different way to assess feature importance. And so if you do need to use a black box and you have the time and resources to do some research around SHAP, do feel free to check it out. We've come to the end of our presentation, and so we hope you learned something new today. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.